Sleep deficiency impacts more than just the physical body. It can also lead to serious health consequences. And it's been linked to chronic conditions such as heart disease, kidney disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, stroke, and erectile dysfunction as well. We visited the Sleep Renewal Clinic in Morningside in Johannesburg to get their approach to helping people get quality and uninterrupted sleep. Check it out. I'm Dr. Maureen Allen, and I'm the founder and medical director of the Renewal Institute, which incorporates skin renewal, body, health, brain, and sleep renewal. So it's very important for the mind and the body to get restorative sleep. And that's exactly what happens when we sleep and, we get, and when we're getting efficient restorative sleep. Number one, there's a very important function of sleep which is to clear out all the toxins and abnormal proteins that build up during the day. So it's basically during the night, your body, your brain is 10 times more active if you're getting restored to sleep to decrease those toxins. Then the second part, the very important part, is to restore the body. And that's when all the hormones are balanced and the hormones that are important are the growth hormone, that's when growth hormone kicks in. And you know growth hormone is the anti-aging hormone. And also your, for your insulin to be regulated during your sleep and that balances your sugar levels in the, in the body during the day as well. And then also your immune system is much more efficient when you sleep properly. And you'll find with a few days of, a few nights of no sleep, you'll find that your immune system goes down and you're more vulnerable to colds, flus, bacteria, and also to cancer. So that's why it's so important to get proper restorative sleep. And then another very important function is that your memories are consolidated. So if you're not getting deep sleep and REM sleep, then you're not backing up all your memories from the day. And then people can't understand why their short-term memory starts going and they start getting senile moments and they just put it to old age. But it's not. It's because you're not going through the normal sleep cycles and you're not getting that deep and REM sleep. You know what, very often people don't know actually how they're sleeping. They think they're getting enough sleep, but they're not, they're not aware of what's actually happening during the sleep and that you're getting your proper sleep cycles because during the night you have different sleep cycles. So people don't actually know, what's, you know, you know what kind of sleep they're having. And then they take coffee you know, uh, uh, after one o'clock in the afternoon and they drink alcohol and these all disrupt the sleep, the sleep cycles. Then as you get older, sometimes it occurs younger, you start having poor nights, you start getting insomnia. So what do you do? You go for a quick fix and you start taking sleeping tablets without actually knowing what is going on in your sleep and whether you are getting those phases of restorative sleep. You know, most people don't really know what normal sleep is and restorative sleep is, so they just carry on with their day and they're running on cortisol. And believe it or not, when you're not getting restorative sleep, you're more stressed when you're sleeping, your cortisol levels are much higher than when you're awake during the day. I mean, it's hard to believe that you can be more stressed when you're sleeping. To get a good night's sleep without medication, it's very important to follow like a sleep hygiene pattern where number one, you switch off all uh, electronic for at least an hour and a half before you go to bed. Your room has got to be at, at a certain temperature. You can't have a too hot room and your bed must be comfortable. You must also make sure that there's no light coming into the room. So make sure that you have blockout curtains and then also getting to bed at a certain time every night. You can't believe how that helps. Very importantly, you have to make sure that you're not taking certain foods after a certain period, like do not drink coffee after one o'clock in the afternoon because even though you can tolerate coffee, it definitely affects the sleep cycle. So if you've optimized your sleep hygiene, but you're still not falling asleep easily, and you're still not staying asleep, and you're waking up exhausted, then I suggest you come to professionals and come to a place like Sleep Renewal, where we have uh, technicians and experts who've been doing this for years, and we'll do a proper sleep study on you to see what's going on and whether you are getting restorative sleep. My name is Marissa Kerber Albuja and my role in the sleep clinic is as an EEG and sleep technician. We are situated in Ravonia Road, Morningside, Johannesburg, and um, it, it's part of the Renewal Institute of Holistic Health. Snoring can actually be so detrimental to your health if yeah. you have sleep apnea. So that's one of the things that usually brings patients into the yeah. clinic is the fact that they snore so loudly. The overnight sleep clinic consists of hotel type rooms which are soundproof, have an ensuite bathroom, and it's very much like sleeping at home. It's comfortable, it's pretty, and 
it actually is uh, in conducive to proper sleep in a strange environment. We record everything to do with sleep, respiration with belts, we oximetry, which is the oxygen level that we um, record to see if there's a drop in, in the oxygen level. We also do leg movements, and once we have all that acquired, um, we record it, analyze it, and send it to the doctors. Now, the electrodes we use are they acquisition electrodes, so the patient will feel nothing. So it's not like they will get a little shock or anything, nothing like that. It'll pick up the activity, convert it to a waveform, which is then easy to interpret. Um, the patient's results will be uh, reviewed by a pulmonologist. These results get sent to the patient's referring doctor, or ultimately, if they don't have a referring doctor, they can be referred to one of the doctors of the Renewal Institute. Um, with those results and um, the tests that are done, we can then guide them to a better sleep um, hygiene, to a better state of health. I have had bad sleep patterns because of my job and my career, and up in the mornings, late nights, so on, but um, it's funny when you read the symptoms and you realize maybe I, I think I could be suffering from a bit of sleep apnea. So here so I am. That's great that you came because yeah. that's what we check. The patients can be tested at home. If they don't want to have a sleep study at home, they can come into the office, have an in-house sleep study, which then constitutes sleeping in one of our lovely rooms, which is soundproof, and the ambience will encourage good quality sleep, and somebody's here the whole night to make sure that everything's working properly. A good night's sleep is so important for the body to restore itself. And there's nothing worse than not having that good night's sleep, not being able to fall asleep, waking up in the middle of the night. So if this is happening to you and you've done all the sleep hygiene and you've optimized that, please give us a call. Help us at hand. We can help you. We can get these sleep patterns better so that you can live a more optimal life. All right, so I'm now joined by Dr. Maureen from the Renewal Institute to tell us more about the approach to sleep health at the Sleep Renewal Clinic. Welcome, Dr. Maureen. Well, we're going to go into some sleep disorders as okay. well. The one thing that um, sort of sprang to mind is um, I've been on my husband's case about it because he snores. I can say it openly because I tell quite a few people, but it affects my sleep. And the loved ones, that's, you know, it affects someone else's sleep. So the person is, is, is also affected with, you know, sort of this interrupted sleep. But they, I'm sure they get stressed out by knowing that their um, sleep hygiene is affecting someone else as well. No, absolutely, that's what normally happens. Yeah. The wife brings the husband in and says, I cannot <laughs> sleep in the same bed or the same room with him anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And please check him out because every now and then he stops breathing and then I have to wake it's up and It's quite scary. And they think, you know, if they just like nudge, the, you know, nudge yeah. their husbands and, or, or turn them on the back, it's going to go away. Yeah. But it doesn't. They yeah. just carry on with the obstructions during the night. So... Yeah, so sorry. it's a big problem, yeah, and yeah. and people aren't aware of the fact, you know, they they know that they snore, uh, and they think this is a joke. But snoring is no joking matter. Mm. It's telling you that something that your air during the night is obstructing, mm. and that's what's causing that loud snore. Mm. And the very fact that you're snoring. You know, it's like a jackhammer. People who use a jackhammer, eventually they have nerve damage yes. you know, from that yes. constant vibration mm. of the jackhammer. And when you snore, it's right here near your carotids. Mm. And that vibration of the snoring like irritates the carotids, and that's when you start building up plaque. Hmm. So it causes wow. so many things, and that's why there's a much higher incidence of stroke when you snore, because you build up those carotids and you cause obstructions in your carotids, and then one day you know, little plaque ruptures, and then you get a stroke. So that's why it's so important to... Yeah. If you can't sleep, if you can't fall asleep, if you can't stay sleeping while if you're you wake sleeping, up and you're not if you're rested. a light sleeper, yeah, yeah. if you snort during your sleep, if you ever wake up, it's the most terrible feeling, you mm. wake up like in a panic. Yes. That is the adrenaline kicking in mm. to wake you up, mm. to, open, to make you breathe. And this usually happens after you've neglected this uh, you know, sleep apnea for many years. Yeah. You'll find that your whole uh, autonomic system is in overdrive. Mm. And as I said, you're more stressed when you're sleeping than when you're awake. 
it sort of creates um, a vicious cycle that exacerbates other conditions and then those no, conditions absolutely. exacerbate the lack you of sleep. You can't believe the oxidative stress that occurs during uh, pauses of breath, you know, mm. when you stop breathing. Mm. Now sleep apnea, obstructive sleep apnea is the more common one. Okay. And that's what most of the you know the people come to our clinic with but there's also another one called upper airways which is more the thinner patients who are very light sleepers but the sleep apnea patients actually sleep like a log until it gets so bad that the autonomic system is in, you know, in so much overdrive that it keeps waking them up and that's when they start having problems okay so sleep apnea what happens you're sleeping in the night and then when you get into the restorative phases of sleep deep sleep and REM sleep. Mm. That's when your body recovers. That's when that growth hormone kicks in. That's when you start detoxifying mm. the brain from all the abnormal proteins during the day. Mm. But that part of the sleep is your restorative phase. But unfortunately, with that part of the sleep, your whole body relaxes. Yes. And that's what happens. So your whole body relaxes. Your tongue, which is not only this little piece in your mouth, it's a huge fat muscle in your throat. So when you relax, your tongue falls back and stays back for 10 seconds or more. So that's how we classify an Sleep. apnea, okay, okay. is when the tongue falls back and stays back and obstructs the airway. Okay. Then you also get shallow breathing, which is called, a, so that's called an apnea, when you stop breathing, and then shallow breathing is an hypopnea. But both of those, the apneas and the hypopneas, stop the airflow or decrease the airflow to the lungs mm -hmm. and your oxygen saturations, can you believe, drop. Yeah. So any uh, oxygen desaturation of more than 4% is then classified as an apnea uh, and an hypopnea. And then while they're doing the sleep study, we measure all the apneas and hypopneas, and also the central apneas, which is something different, which is you know, less common. And then they score it over the night, and they see exactly how many times you stop breathing during the night. Mm. And then you get an AHR index, and that tells you exactly. Some people, so, so from 0 to 5 is normal, so you can have up to five apnea hypopneas per hour. Five to 15 is moderate. And 15 to, sorry, five to 15 is mild. 15 to 30 is moderate. And then over 30 is severe. Okay. And you can get some people have AHRs of, of 88 per wow. hour. So they stop breathing for 88 times per hour. I mean, you're not getting any rest. And what's so important, you stop breathing so the blood doesn't go there. Yep. You know, so you're, yep. And as soon as you get reperfusion, when the blood starts coming, coming back, that's when you get so much more damage to the body. Mm. And this is happening, I mean, yeah. so many times a night. And then you do that for, yeah. you know, over 10 years. And people want to know what's wrong with them. Yes. They're sick, they've yes. got all these uh, you know, pro uh, problems, they've got diabetes, yeah. they've got blood pressure. Because during the night, you've got to get restorative sleep to give your heart a break. Mm. Because at night you get your blood pressure dips, and it should be dipped because it's giving your heart a break. Mm. But if you're having these stressful situations during the, the night, you never, oxygen, get, yeah, oxygen, you never, yeah. you never ever, uh, ever get that relief. Mm. And eventually the heart and the chest are negative cavity. Yeah. And every time you stop breathing, you suck in all the blood from your main, main uh, vessels mm. back into the heart. And over time, your heart slowly starts dilating and getting bigger and that's why people start suffering from like uh, irregular heartbeats such as okay, atrial fibrillation. Okay, okay. So there are many knock-on effects yes. of not getting proper, of having these, um, uh, of having sleep apnea. Yeah. We're going to go into it and perhaps why it's more prevalent in men than women or perhaps that's not the case but we're just going to take a quick break. When we come back we continue our chat uh, with Dr. Maureen. Stay with us. Thanks again for joining us on Real Health. If you've just tuned in, we're talking about sleep disorders and specifically sleep, sleep apnea and why it's important to get a good night's rest. And we're joined by Dr. Maureen. She's from the Renewal Institute. I think sometimes what gets um, people confused is that it's not also a quantity of sleep, but quality of mm. sleep. Some people will sleep for eight hours but not get a good night's rest. And they wake up exhausted. So if you're waking up exhausted and you're suffering from chronic fatigue or you're sleepy or you fall asleep easily when you, you know, when you sit quietly in the day and you fall asleep easily, that means you're not getting restorative sleep. And that means come in and check it out because okay. something's wrong. And, and that's another thing is that, a, a, you know, many people that suffer from sleep apnea, they can fall asleep in like two minutes. Terrible. Out, like you said. And the big danger is, you know, driving a car. Mm. is one of the biggest cause of accidents in people because they mm. fall asleep at the wheel and then the next minute there's an accident because they are so tired. Mm. Why, why does it seem that more men seem to suffer from it? 
um, than women, or is that just a misconception? Uh, you know, you often hear the wives complaining that their Look, hubbies are snoring. Yeah, and yeah. definitely men, maybe because they, you know, because when you drink uh, alcohol at night, you relax your muscles of the throat, and then you know you always never sleep well when you when you have a two to two. Also, men are bigger; they've got bigger muscles; they've got a much bigger tongue. Mm. So, okay, and. And if you're overweight, that's a big problem as well, because all the weight packs, are, you know, packs in the throat. Mm. You know, men with big double chins. Yeah. And there's a certain size neck. If you've got a bigger neck, if you're more than 40, I think for a woman, and I think men is 42, that it means that there's a probability that your chance of sleep apnea is high. So that's all important. And with, unfortunately, as we are going through like evolution, mm -hmm. and over this last, over the last few decades, our food has changed, and we're not, you know. Uh, uh, the food has changed what we feed our babies mm. and the mouths aren't developing as well because oh, wow, they lack yeah. certain vitamins like vitamin K2 sure. and that's why we find kids now with all these screw and cro uh, skew and crooked teeth because their mouths aren't developing, developing well but unfortunately the tongue has remained the same size and the tongue is too big for our mouths and that is what's causing the problem at night you know and this is serious stuff it's true we tend to we tend to laugh at mm. people that's mm. but yeah it's affecting every facet of your health thank you so much for pleasure. joining us and Our for pleasure. showing us what the Great. the sleep clinic is all about